It was a glorious day. The sun hung high in the sky, and there was a rainbow. Hilda, the honeycomb worm, awoke, said hello to her friends, and watched the family of fish swimming by, and the starfish were playing tick tack tock. But oh, a dark shadow suddenly loomed up. And Kindy the Basking Shark swam past to see what it was. She said hello to the family of fish. But oh no, the stormy waves rose higher and higher. And with a great crash, a monster loomed out from the dark cave, spewing out what seemed to be great flames of fire. And what was this? A strange little creature swimming past, and the seas had gone dark, and oh no, my reefs had been smashed. I knew that I had to carry on, and through the seaweed I crawled exhausted, past the little fish, then suddenly I crashed into a sea turtle. And then the next thing I knew, carried along on its back, we arrived at a castle, guarded by starfish. What do you want? they asked. And I explained about how poor Kindy, the basking shark, had got stuck on the bottom of the sea, and that there were strange creatures, light bulb fish, that were passing by on and on a strange journey. The starfish disappeared into the castle, and we waited. I asked Turtle who lived here, and he just said, wait and see. So we waited and waited, and then suddenly, a beautiful kingfish appeared. Uh, darlings, how may I help you? So I explained to him about how the dark shadow and the stormy seas had crashed my reef, and that poor Kindy the basking shark was stuck, and he said he would send a battalion of fish that would bounce upon his tummy to dislodge what had weighed him down. But... He told me that I, and only I, could save the seas. And I had to find the magic rock, which meant going over the bridge, where I had to be most careful of squibs and the terrifying dogfish that guarded it. But first, I would have to find the museum of all living things. And so off we set. Onwards we went, and Turtle said what a marvellous adventure this was going to be. And I just said I didn't want an adventure. I just wanted my home back. When suddenly, a mermaid appeared, as she demanded to know what we wanted. And we said that we needed to find the Museum of All Living Things uh, and the Baked Bean Sea Squirt. She said, follow me. And then, with a great whoosh, off we said. Onwards and onwards, past the sharks and into the museum. What a wondrous place! It seemed that eyes were staring at us from all directions. And we watched as dainty creatures floated in and out. She explained it would have been a museum of all living things if it wasn't for the humans that were doing so much damage to the oceans. And that I would have 
to get over the bridge to the magic rock. Well, we waited, and then she came back with a map, and she warned us that we would have to get past the pipe fish. They liked playing games, and it would be quite a challenge for us. So we thanked her and set off again on our great adventure. And off we were again, on towards the bridge. Suddenly we met the light bulb fish, and they told us that we only had two tides left before disaster would strike. The light bulb fish had been following us, and then as soon as they arrived, they went. So on we went, me riding on the back of the turtle. And then we saw the maze of pipefish, and stuck in the middle was the poor little baked bean sea squirt. We watched as the pipefish giggled about, blocking the poor baked bean sea squirt. It was then that a jellyfish appeared. And then the jellyfish started stinging the pipefish. Ouch! Ouch! They went. And slowly, as it continued to sting the pipefish, there was a gap, and the baked bean sea squirt whooshed. I went to say hello to it and immediately it squirted water in my face which I felt was a little bit rude but he apologised and said it's just what he did when he got rather nervous. So we were ready to continue on our journey but then the baked bean sea squirt warned us about the snappy fish. They were very hungry and would try and eat anything they saw. It was then I had a marvellous idea. A sea turtle, who'd been hiding behind a rock, popped his head out. And I said, now then, sea turtle, you must swim as fast as you can. Baked bean sea squirt said, I presume you can do that. Oh yes, I swim very fast. And then the plan was formed. He would lead the snappy fish away from us and allow me and the baked bean sea squirt to quietly crawl along. And in a flash he was off, pursued by the foul snappy fish, while me and the baked bean sea squirt quietly slid along the seabed. The sea turtle returned with a great big grin on his face. He led the snappy fish away from us. Well, then we were suddenly by the bridge. And what a strange creation it was. Lots of spikes rising high up. We weaved our way through them and then we saw the dreaded snarling dogfish. Quietly I approached the dogfish. I have to say I was trembling somewhat. As I started crossing the bridge, I was so concentrating on the sharp spikes that I didn't notice there was the tentacle of the giant squid. And then appeared the dogfish. Now, 
The dogfish was growling, but then I suddenly noticed a bone, and I threw the bone for the dogfish, and off he scampered, allowing us to get over the bridge. Ah, oh, I was so excited and so pleased with myself. Then, as I sat and pondered about how clever I had been, I didn't notice the tentacles rising up and grabbing me, pulling me down under the bridge. Well, I have to tell you, I really thought my end had come. The terrifying beast opened its mouth, but then Dogfish appeared and bit it, and the squid hurtled away into the depths, and I managed to swim back up on top of the bridge with Dogfish. Now, Dogfish was frightfully excited, and I do think that he wanted to carry on playing Chasey Bone. But I said, no, no, no time for that. We must get on to the magic rock. So, off we all set. Now, once we were over the bridge, we suddenly decided to have a rest. And there, out of nowhere, appeared a great wave as it crashed around and the little light bulb fish came out. Oh, and they bounced about and they seemed to be telling us to gather around the magic rock. Well, I have to tell you, when I came to the magic rock, it just looked, well, quite frankly, really rather dull and ordinary, and I was spectacularly disappointed. But then the fish began to sway about. They had symbols on their fins, and as they started moving around, Suddenly, one of them cried out, Look out! The monster! And from nowhere rose the terrifying monster, waving its great arms and grinning. But then it said the most extraordinary thing. It said, Fear not. And the three of us looked at the monster. So there we were, staring at the monster. The monster did point out that in actual fact it could have eaten us if it chose to. Then the queen of the light bulb fish said, quick, quick, we must concentrate. We must start putting our pads around the magic rock. But oh no. The monster had noticed that there was one golden pad missing. So, again, I had a bright idea and suggested that the monster should see if it could find the missing pad. And then he began to float around. All colours were shining from his tummy. And as he went to each light bulb fish, there, a pad was revealed. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. But then, the monster approached one little fish. And that fish did not have a pad. Suddenly, the mermaid arrived on Kindy the Shark. The monster told me he knew where the missing pad was, and so he brought it in. And very slowly and carefully, he began to place it down by the magic rock. And we waited, 
Such was the excitement. And then it happened. The rock split open and from the centre emerged the magnificent Queen Squid of the Seas. She asked the little fish why had it stolen the golden pad. Well, the poor little thing was terrified, but told us about the diver. What diver, we asked. And then we just saw the diver swimming frantically away. The mermaid and the shark gave chase. Up and up he floated, frantically trying to escape the jaws of Kindy the basking shark. But to no avail, they managed to grab hold of the diver and begin to bring him back down to face the Queen Squid. But she forgave the diver and said the humans must learn the song of the seas and then they would know how to look after the seas and all the creatures. She then said that I could return home and the mermaid thanked me.